Hey guys, Dazzler Magic here, and I hope you like rabbit holes because we're about to jump down one. You read the title, you know what this is about. Here's some rats. For only $10 Canadian, you can get these three rat tokens if you are the one human being on the planet that is a sufficient fan of Disney's Cinderella, Ratatouille, and Pokemon, because that's where those three are from. Is this like a three-way listing where you can choose your option? No. Now, this particular seller actually sells some cool-looking stuff, so, I mean, you know, whatever. I just thought this particular one was weird. And you know what? A couple of their other listings are weird, but, you know, it only gets weirder from here. I found some cursed items. I found some just... I, I don't even know what to describe some of these as. Like, for example, this beautiful, just 10 out of 10, gem mint condition BCW blue... Profolio LX, nine pocket side loading leatherette, probably spelled wrong, album binder for TCG. Not TCGs with an S, just one TCG. And I suspect it might be Yu Gi Oh! Because if you open this, you are clearly getting sucked into the Shadow Realm. This thing is antique and cursed as hell. This thing has seen it all. I wouldn't be surprised if the original owner was actually dead and this was the culprit. Now, the same seller also has a lot for Emrakul, Comet Storm, another Comet Storm, and Lightning Bolt. What do those three have to do with each other? Three and a half of them are memes. This person has just got to be joking with us. They have to be. I looked at their listings, and they just are a general reseller. They've got some Magic the Gathering stuff, but I'm not convinced they know what they have. But who, what, what rational person would look at that and say, yeah, that's an item I should acquire and resell on eBay. That would sell. As a former professional reseller, let me just say this wouldn't be high on my pickers list. But you know what else wouldn't be? Magic the Gathering themed set of real crystals in the five colors. You know, guys, the, the five colors. So these are just referred to in the description as rock crystals. I think they're artificially colored quartz, which means they're probably made in China. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I thought this was a calcite and I looked it up and that's different. So I, I don't know what this is. But to not have it in the description, I mean, this person... Over 100 feedback, so they ain't new. I mean, maybe it was all purchases. I don't know. They don't have that many listings. But uh, the description just says, This is a rare and sought-after collectible card game accessory for the popular game Magic, colon, The Gathering. Ampersand can be yours to add to your collection. Whether you're looking to complete your display at home, give a gift, or simply add to your rock and crystal collection, the this Magic the Gathering themed set of crystals is a must-have accessory for any Magic the Gathering fan. Well put, unusual seller. So I had to know. I looked closer at some of the other photos. And okay, like the white one, for example, is three and a half inches across. So like these are not small. Like the green one's like four inches, so they, that's pretty big. Uh, that's like 10 uh, cm, which I believe stands for communist measurement. Who would ever use a measuring system that doesn't use fractions based on dividing by two? Like who would do that? So anyway, it is my extremely unprofessional opinion that the white is complete ass quality, like ore grade quartz, very cloudy. The purple is amethyst, which is basically just quartz with iron in it. And then the other three are similar variations of quartz. I'm not sure what you would call them. But, I mean, a chunk of amethyst that big? 10, 15 bucks on the open market? Just throwing it out there. But uh, I absolutely love that they listed it as ungraded, light played, excellent. <laughs> Yeah, using the name Magic the Gathering, that'll, that'll get you in trouble. I mean, you have to almost say, like, it's not licensed or disclose that or pay to be a partner or something, but uh, whatever. And you know what's even better? It says that the shipping location is Las Vegas. Somehow I knew that without even reading it. That just, that, that, that sounds about right. Next up, and this is truly, truly odd, we've got the famous card Groundhog Shadow. Oh, oh, you've never heard of that? That's because it's not real. It was printed in Inquest magazine way back in the day. We're talking, I believe, late 90s. Um, and this is, they claim it's a misprint, but like, okay, whatever. But there were quite a few of these. I might make a video on these because these are just like really cool. It was way before my time, but this ain't the first time I've seen them. So uh, here's the up close right here. Might as well read it. 
So four cost double black, three one summon undead. So you can tell how old this is with the terminology. Now it does say 1997 copyright Wizards of the Coast. So I don't know if Wizards of the Coast like owned Inquest. I thought somebody from Inquest did art for Magic the Gathering back then or something like their illustrator did or I, I don't know. I don't who cares. Go look it up if you're that interested. But anyway, I thought that was weird that this is officially copyrighted when it's not a, a real card. In fact, well, before I read it, here's the back of it. It, it was just cut out from the magazine. It, it's a clipping. They put it in there as like not really a joke. I mean, I don't know. Some weird collectible. It's like if instead of getting a Pokemon card inside your cereal box back in the 90s, you just cut it off the back of the box. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so flip a coin for each creature blocking or blocked by Groundhog Shadow. If the flip ends up in your favor, so I guess you call it in the air or something, uh, the creature is removed from the game for X turns where X is the creature's casting cost. That is kind of cool. So next up, we've got whatever is going on here. So this is listed as MTG token card squirrel token 1-1 one, one rare MTG China heavy play. Uh, played corner JX sixty three two thousand five. Now to me this looks not Chinese. It looks more Japanese, and I happen to know that those two countries don't get along. But the front of it says mtgchina.net. Don't go there; it doesn't load. The site's not around anymore. And the back of it says mtgchina.net. And look at that! Isn't that like the most like rip off of Magic: The Gathering while still trying to kind of look like it? I mean, that skull though. So they just took a token they printed threw a bunch of weird ass clip art on it and then threw a squirrel another squirrel another squirrel all different dpis all different styles some anime girl for some reason with a cool fade and then some anime squirrel with a cup of tea because why not so it's some chinese generic token which i can't really call a ripoff because i mean i guess there probably was a real squirrel card but they aren't really trying here and it's not really a counterfeit and, and it's so old that, like, now it's a collectible. That said, this is going for, like, a couple bucks. And, you know what, they get weirder from there. We've got this one. It's a 5-5 five, five something token. I don't even know. Dragon, I assume. I don't know. They've got some weird mix of artwork themes on here and then something that looks like it's stolen from, like, Dragonlance or something. <laughs> or some 80s or 90s video game. I don't know. That could literally be the art from, like, Dragon's Lair or something for all I know. Now, this is still mtgchina.net, but the back is different. Because, I guess, if the front's different, why not make the back different? And then the same seller has this rat token. And I don't know the origin of it, but on the back it just says Crazy Clowns. So this is, you know, clearly Japanese, but that's about all I knew about it. I knew absolutely nothing about anything called Crazy Clowns token cards. Well, according to some random website I found, uh, Crazy Clowns used to be a Japanese website dedicated to different kinds of gaming. So, uh, pretty much what I assume, some rando company decided to make tokens, and what's Watsy gonna do? So apparently they operated their, uh, token series from 1997 right on up to 2007. So while I may have answers for that one, I'm not sure I have anything that resembles an answer for this one. For a mere $88,888.88, you can get your very own one of one PSA graded Auto 10 Beta Time Walk MTG Artist Proof with Painted Art by Amy Weber. And if you look at the other photo there, you also get the card or what? So those astute observers may have noticed that they seem to have a different definition of artist proof than I do. You know, because this is an artist proof of Time Walk signed by the artist Amy Weber. So you can notice some slight differences between the original and this one. Where'd I get this picture? Same seller. Now if you zoom in on the bottom, it says VintageMagic.com, which is also the seller on eBay, all new art? Copyright 2019 Amy Weber? So, well, that probably isn't a, an original artist proof then. So the generally accepted definition of an artist proof is uh, here's what the final product will look like when we print it. So like if you're going to do some, some art, you do it in Photoshop, you print it off on your home printer and you're like, cool, then you submit it. They send you a proof of what it will look like printed in the magazine so that you could say, oh, whoa, the, you know, the, the purple and blue balance is way off. All the blues are purple. I need to shift that because there's something wrong with like the fiery controller or whatever. Get a little too technical there, but uh, you know, that's what a proof is. 
So the description for this one, j just this proof right here that isn't a proof, for your consideration offered is the time walk Jikli, which I don't know what that is, hand signed by the original artist, Amy Weber. Oh, pardon me, they wrote Amy Webby. And uh, in the listing for that other one, they, they spelled set with two T's. I don't know about you guys, but I have a rule. I don't buy from people on eBay if they look borderline illiterate because what else are they gonna get wrong? Spend $10 and hire an editor for your $88,000 listings, maybe. So anyway, I looked up Jicli or Jicli or whatever it is in French and uh, it just means really high res secondary printing, basically. It's a print. So a print made for just them where they had the artist sign it and then they got her name wrong in the listing. That's what we're working with here. Who are these vintage magic people? Who is behind this? Does anybody know the story behind these idiots? With 5,000 feedback, I assumed somebody knows something about these people, but my God. This is mind blowing. I'm hoping English is just the one thing, like, like writing composition is the one thing they're bad at, because if they're bad at anything else involving their business, you can argue selling this print for $225, even with signature, is, is bad business. But then again, 10 available, 5 sold. What do I know? But yeah, these prints were made with Moab Entrada 290 GSM Cotton Rag using Epson Ultra Chrome Pro Ink. Ooh. I mean, that's pigmented ink. It'll last in UV for like over a century. Okay, cool, whatever. But really? Really? Whatever, I ain't gonna crap on someone's hustle, but uh, what the hell is this? Okay, this will piss some people off, but in my professional art assessment opinion, Amy Weber's art looks like crap, but this even I could draw. This would be low even for her, which allegedly she did. So what is this? This one of one PSA auto 10, which means like regardless of the quality, it gets a 10 just based on what it is, I guess. I don't know. Time Walk MTG Artist Proof with painted art by Amy Weber. Uh, this is one of the rarest collectibles in Magic the Gathering history. Uh, Artist Proofs AP were generally limited to 50. Wait, you just said one of one. Huh. Generally limited to 50 in the world ever produced and given to Magic artists as a thank you, which is absolutely not. It's a proof. You're supposed to do work. Shut up. Uh, it's, it's a thank you for their work for every card they illustrated. Uh, the beta set with two T's is the first and most coveted of them all. Ah, yes, beta, famous for being the first letter in the Greek alphabet. And also the first magic set. There definitely isn't one called Alpha. Maybe they're correct about some of these things and I'm misinterpreting it, but this is all coming together. I'm not saying it's a scam, but I'm saying this is some dumb shit. So the next paragraph of this description of this item is Post Malone paid $800,000 for a CGC 8.5 black Lotus uh, beta artist proof signed by Christopher Rush. Non-painted, painted proofs with artwork on the back ranges in quality in the full color. For some reason, it capitalizes full color painted beta artist proofs or PAP for short, are the crown jewel of all AP collecting, which also was capitalized for some reason. How does this person get out of bed and find the way to their computer in the morning? Whoever runs this, I'm very curious. I mean, I get it. I used to be an editor. Some stuff like this like pisses me off. Like if they miss, uh, uh, like they did in the other one, uh, Oxford comma, but that's like, th this is a two-year-old wrote this. So finally, the mystery is revealed about what the hell this even is. So... This Time Walk Beta Artist Proof, which is what it was on the front side, has been painted on the back by the original artist Amy Weber. And I guess the second go of it, she just decided, f*** it. My art already looks like something a high schooler would do. Let's just outright prank people with this one. Clearly Amy Weber had somewhere to be in about 20 minutes and just whipped this together. <laughs> what the hell? Why would you ever take an artist proof of Power 9 and paint on the back of it? Other than the fact that, and I might be mistaken about this, the backs are blank because they're artist proofs. They're sheets of the front. They're, I mean, they're cut, but they didn't bother to print the Magic the Gathering card back on it because they don't want them floating around. So this was literally just an artist proof. And then the artist goes, oh, make this brighter, make this, you know, duller. Oh, I didn't like the way the stars showed up. Oh, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I'd like to think at, at the recommendation of these very notorious professionals in the magic world, Vintage Magic the Gathering, whoever the hell they are, 
they agreed to have her create a one of one because guys, if there's only one of something, it's worth more, right? Why isn't this sold yet? I wonder why this isn't sold yet. Then they got those dinguses at PSA to play along with this and give it an auto 10. I guess the logic was like, hey, we unrolled some papyrus scroll that we found in a pyramid in Egypt. And, you know, the grading place would be like, I don't know. The edges kind of has some wear on them. It's like, no, it's a one of one scroll from like a thousand years. Just shut up. It's an auto 10. Like, I assume that's what it was because this is like, there's only going to be one of these. But this reminds me of the story that MTG Lion, because uh, I guess we're covering idiots in the magic community in this video, that he told about like some some kid found some really obscure card that was completely worthless on the reserve list. I think it was a misprint or something, or I, I don't remember what it was, or maybe it was signed and stamped, and then he threw it up for like grading and was trying to get like thousands of dollars on Reddit for it. He's like, but there's only one! And the people are like, yeah, but it's a garbage card. Nobody likes it. Nobody plays it. So I'll give you like 40 bucks for it. He wanted like thousands. Rarity does not generate demand necessarily. So the whole concept behind this, the fact that this exists, is just an affront to anybody with a brain. It looks like shit. And generating an even rarer, like a one of one out of a 50 of 50 or whatever, one of 50. Well, that one must be worth $88,000. No, stop it, get help. And to top it all off, let's have the spelling and grammar and punctuation of a Craigslist listing. That'll make people want to drop 88 grand on this and totally trust us when it's a stupid idea and all we do is like basically MLM level, you know, ridiculous comparison. Oh, but Post Malone paid 800K. <laughs> guys, guys, that one wasn't even painted. Let me just read the disclaimer here. PSA has certified this card as an auto 10 grade and then in squiggle brackets, because I guess we're programming now, they are not grading the card at this time if painted. So they declined to grade it, gave it an auto 10 after I guess determining that it was a real legitimate, um, completely and utterly defaced artist proof after some absolute financial geniuses at this company went to Amy Walker and said, Hey, we're not going to spell your name correctly, but do you want to take one of your last remaining artist proofs and draw all over the back? It'll be worth millions and actually convinced her to do it. Worst part. This ain't the only example of them doing this. Go look up their eBay. If you want, I, I, I know nothing about this company. I already hate them. This, this is the stupidest business slash marketing stunt I have ever seen in the entire magic world. Nothing comes to mind as being dumber than this. I get it. It was the original artist that did the back. I mean, so it's not like you just spray painted your name on it and said, Ooh, it's been attacked by graffiti. It's unique. It's more unique now. But my God, just leave it. Best part is it says any questions in all caps for some reason, comma, please contact us before bidding. It's also not an auction and you're not bidding. And they're selling this out of the eBay vault. Wow. Okay, I, I've thought about this in the past. Now I'm really thinking about it. If I went through and signed the last remaining stack of cards, I've got about 30 or 40 of them, from the original bullet hole video where I found out how many magic cards it took to stop a 9mm, and I signed them and sent them to, like, PSA or something with like a video of me certifying. No, I'd shot them. That's, these are mine. Trust me. Pinky swear. And then they certify them. And then I send them to the vault. Would somebody be dumb enough to pay more than like $10 for that? Considering I've already sent out that exact product, like four different Christmases just to my Patreon supporters. There's like 500 of them floating around out there. We did the lands. We did the Phoenixes. Um, some of them were from the newer video and I don't remember which is which. So I'm not sure I even have uh, the older ones anymore. But you know what? If anybody just has that much money rolling around or just thinks it's 10 bucks worth of cool, <laughs> then it makes me wonder if 20 bucks would pass. But I'm just, for, for now, <laughs> no promises in the future if my finances change. But for now, I'm a little above that. I, I don't think we're going to sink that low. And you know what? Here, here we go. If you watched all the way to the end, you're, you're awesome. We're going to hold a little contest here. If you guys can find over the next like two weeks and send it to me, uh, my email is on like the about tab. They kind of change how that works, but you'll, you'll find it. Just click around on my channel, you'll find it. But find 
the most cursed Magic the Gathering items on eBay that you can find. Mail them to me. I'll make a part two of this video. And whoever finds what I find to be the weirdest, most cursed item, no posting it yourself, I will cross-reference, I'll ship you one of the bullet hole cards. Signed. The race is on. Okay, I know y'all too lazy. Desbiz with a Z, inquiries at gmail.com. I can't really think of a very solid way to, to find stuff like this. Um, but, I mean, maybe some of you have older screenshots. or I mean, can't really get them off the internet. They have to be live listings or at least within, what is it, 180 days of visible eBay history? 90 days, whatever it is. I don't know. Just uh, you got to, like, uh, support it with a link or I have to be able to search the item and make sure it, it is currently or used to be live. So nothing from, like, Reddit from 10 years ago or something, you know? So that's a rule is applicable to anybody in the world. Let me just check. Uh, yep, got three international stamps sitting right here on my desk. Get hunting, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.